So in the previous segment, we went over how you can basically draw a shape, and during the extrude, you can press B to bevel, Q to Q bevel, Shift F in order to flip the shape, tap to pause, and then from here you have this blue dot that you can use to adjust the width amount for both bevels currently in play. However, my favorite method is pressing D to open the mini helper where we can actually adjust the segments that are happening on the secondary bevel in addition to being able to adjust the width individually of the primary bevel. So in the event that you need to get in and make very specific changes, you're able to do that. So with that aside, this version also introduces a new toggle called Bevel Both Ends, which is quite unique because it's currently in a V1 state, meaning it will be improving over subsequent releases. To show it in action, if we click on Bevel, we have this as our start state in the helper, meaning that the next shape I draw will not only bevel, but have a Q bevel, which will look like this. However, what if I wanted to perform a reverse bevel and a Q bevel at the same time? Well, that is where the toggle for bevel both ends comes in, which means that after drawing the shape, pressing B will perform a refresh that will attempt to bevel both ends. And what this looks like in action is basically this. In the event that we're not in a reverse bevel state, once I press Shift F, and then I press B, we see that it actually does come into play and we actually have a bevel happening on the inside in addition to it happening on the outside. So by pressing D, we can go back in our helper and adjust the amount of segments that's happening on the bevel that's going in, in addition to being able to adjust the width that's taking place here. So this is something that still is very new, so it has a lot of potential for issues. And by issues, let's take this bottom face and actually drag it up too far. And we see that currently there are some issues with weights colliding in this V1 version that will have to be resolved. So make sure that if you're using bevel both ends that you definitely give it an adequate amount of depth because otherwise you will end up with shading artifacts that can only be resolved by going in and actually adjusting the amount of bevel taking place. But really it's giving these a proper amount of distance that allows them to both play together. So now we see that we're able to work but really, this is something that we will be improving over subsequent releases. So I just want to point out that these sort of issues can exist. So let us take this time to right click and cancel this shape. And we're going to press D and just collapse the bevel. In addition to having Q bevel enabled, we're also going to choose to have the front face enabled, which is the reverse bevel. So basically, whenever we draw the shape, we're now beveling both on the inside and the outside. However, whenever it comes to this interior bevel, I like having a low amount of segments in order to give it something really sharp. And then whenever it comes to the interior, we can actually jump this up a little bit. In this scenario, we see that we actually have three bevels in place compared to the previous scenario where whenever you transition a shape via the B refresh, it actually attempts to use bevel both ends with our initial bevel system. So there are currently two bevel systems in place. And over the course of subsequent updates, you'll see one of them eventually take over and become refined to completion, which I'm assuming is going to probably be the latter because I definitely want individual bevels for all three levels instead of sharing it for both the width and the base and then for the reverse bevel to have its own, which is what we were looking at previously. So just to recap, so if we draw shape at this point, we now have a very nice re reverse bevel happening, but keep in mind that if you go up too far and you have something shallow, you're gonna have issues with the V groups colliding with each other, which is something that we're currently looking into resolving. But in action, this thing is actually quite beautiful whenever it comes to getting a very particular type of cut that will be both reflective in your normal matte baking, but also be very well defined. So continuing on, let's just disable the bevel front face, which means that whenever I draw the shape, it's going to just have the Q bevel. In the event that I press Shift F, we have our reverse bevel. And if I press B, we are now using that first system I was talking about. So if I press D, we see that we have our main bevel and our second bevel. And this is the system that will definitely bring you into some issues if you're unaware of its existence. So like I'm saying, this is something we're definitely looking into resolving, but it's part of a very deep discussion that we're having currently about bevel that still continues to this moment. So to recap and show a typical use case scenario, we'll press X and delete this cube and press Alt W to switch over to Hops tool, part of Hard Ops, and just bring in our smart box, hold control, and we will just make some adjustments to the dots to turn this into a panel of sorts, and Alt W switch back over to box cutter. And from here, I could just press D, activate bevel, click on Q bevel, reverse bevel. And if we make sure that bevel both ends is enabled, that means whenever I begin drawing, we have something like this happening. So it's always good to pause it 
and go inside and adjust your specific options inside the D because there is a chance that it could just go awry like you were seeing in this case. Keep in mind, if you have something shallow, you're definitely going to deal with some artifacting. So now that we have our shape set up via that one, because in a previous update we have bevel retaining settings across uses, now every time we draw a shape, it is now having a reverse bevel and a Q bevel happening, which is something that was on the to-do list, but we had just never gotten around to doing. So from here, I could just press Alt X, maybe press A to add a new mirror modifier. And I'm just going to mirror on the X while holding Shift, and then press X to set the mirror back to default. And we're also gonna mirror on the Y. Maybe I didn't do that right. A, 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 to collapse all these mods, you know, A. So let's go in and make sure that we're on the right modifier. We want to be on this one, which can mirror on the Y. I don't know why we're stuck on that first one. And then with Everscroll, we can just simply recall it, make adjustments to our cutters. And I was actually just now thinking about redoing this entire segment but it appears that we might be able to steer this to a successful ending. And just like that, we've cut an interior and you know, just a quick panel, just playing with Q bevel, front face bevel, AKA reverse bevel and bevel both ends.